How are you dealing with depression, restlessness, and burnout during the pandemic? I just kicked the can down the road, alternate between getting bored with PC games, getting bored streaming TV shows and movies, and getting bored with lying in bed trying to go back to sleep after I wake up in the morning. I understand. Feels like days are starting to blend together but hey, you're helping a hell of a lot. I know it's not much coming from me but thank you for doing your part. I needed to be reminded of this. Nothing like 10 months of unemployment and not having a car to make you feel useless. Dude. Same. Nothing since last March. At least I have a vehicle. I go out once a month and just bulk buy everything I need, and it's back to being in this effing apartment. I don't know how I would make it if it wasn't for online games and most of my friends playing online. Not well but I fight on. Take care of each other. I'm in a similar boat. For no good reason at all, tonight feels like it's all just boiling over. I don't know how long I can take all this BS. Hard to think about the days blurring together and the holidays with my family I couldn't have and see people still not wearing masks and making stupid, selfish decisions. Sending love to you and yours. I've noticed a lot of people feeling burnt out and my theory is because people are starting to realize we're getting to the one year mark with this stuff. That and especially the uncertainty. God knows how long we still have to deal with this bullcrap. It destroys me mentally to know that it can possibly take another year, or maybe five. Also seeing so many news of a vaccine but knowing it will still be months before I get one. Having my mother doing chemo being basically up top in the high risk group and just counting the days one by one until we get vaccinated. That's exactly what happened to me. I was holding on until recently but January had I realized how long it's been. I know the feeling and it sucks every day I'm trying to avoid the news or looking at the death rates, I feel for those who have lost people but mentally I'm done I miss my family my routine life. I completely get you. Just waiting for better days. Thanks for the award, maybe it is all those little things lol. I haven't looked at the news in so long, I just don't have the bandwidth for it. Can't tell if that makes me selfish or smart. Feels like I've been checked out for months now. I stopped for ages but kid you not just check before I came on here just thinking when can I go see my family. It's exhausting mentally physically emotionally. You're not alone in feeling this and you're not selfish and even if you are you're allowed to be doing this. I don't even know what life was like before this. Is it just me? I can barely remember at this point, the hook for masks by my door seems like it's been there forever. In my country's traditions it has always been said, after every tragedy or hard times comes years of good days. And if it is true I guess we'll have to wait for it. I know people hate on Sweden but one thing I think they did good is right now they say we should pick a few friends less than seven, and they pick us. Then we only hang out with those so we still get the social interaction. I've chosen my family. Maybe that could make it more bearable for you? I go on walks now. Every chance I get. Weather be damned. Just. Taking it one day at a time. It's hard, and I'm miserable. But I have to believe, even just a little, that it will end. Edit, thank you all for your concern, I promise I'm going to be okay. I'm not in danger, and I'm not alone. I hope we'll all be okay. I have been in a dark place for some time, and let me tell you, depression is nothing to joke about. It is a deep hole that you have to fight to get out of, each and every day. It takes a lot of effort that frankly, you just don't have most days. Opening up about how you are feeling and what you are going through can be very liberating, and that's saying a lot coming from someone who always kept everything bottled up. My advice, don't give up on yourself, people will inevitably give up on you, but that's on them. Keep pushing. Talk to somebody. It really can help. God, I feel this. I'm an EMT and we're short-staffed, I'm supposed to work 40-hour weeks, but since there's no one to work nights I'm usually not able to go home meaning I'm working 50 to 60 hour weeks and going to school full time. All of my classes are online and I do majority of my schoolwork at work in my free time, if I wasn't able to do that then I'd get almost no sleep. I'm already barely getting enough sleep, and it's always at random hours of the day so I'm tired 24-7 because my body doesn't know when I'm supposed to be sleeping or awake. My depression has also come in full swing so I'm exhausted, and have no motivation to do anything. 
Some days I just want to cry, but that takes up so much energy and I have so many things to do. My boyfriend asks what's wrong but like, I don't even know. I'm just tired and I want it all to end. I need a break. Sometimes when I'm going in for my weekly COVID test there's a part of me that hopes it's positive just so I can get some time off, but I know this place would be effed without me, I'm working one third of the shifts at my location and there's little to no one to cover it if I'm gone. Just had to get that out. Edit, wow I did not expect this comment to get so much attention. Thank you for the kind and motivating words everyone, and thank you everyone who gave it an award. I've read every comment, and will try to respond to as many as I can as soon as I'm able to. People like you are the reason everything is going to be okay. Thank you for your dedication. We also have to stop making it so difficult to do basic things like get an education, live in a house, wild right, and generally make all our ends meet with enough time left over for family, friends and passions. We're all burning out so fast that we don't enjoy life at all, starting during and right after high school. Why do you need to live in a house when they are building five-story stick frame apartment building everywhere? Only 2k a month to live with 599 of your best friends. Parking spot not guaranteed. As a society, how little we take care of the people like you who we depend on the most to keep it running is absolutely ludicrous. I'm so sorry you're going through all of this and I really wish there was something I could do or say to help. You are doing great. Just do the next right thing. If that is putting on your shoes then that is the next right thing. I don't know you but I care about you because you are a human being. Stories of people like you who keep putting one foot in front of the other even when they want to stop helps people like me keep going too. We're in a similar boat, I work at one of the labs that processes all the COVID tests and we have been completely obliterated by the workload, been doing 12 plus, our shifts every single day for months now and it is getting to me every time I see someone not wearing masks or going to the big parties I see one more swab coming across my desk, one more life in danger and everyone acts like I'm the butthole for not going to my nephew's birthday party super spreader. We're going to make it through this. Much love. I found that letting myself off the hook on bad days is really helpful. Like you said, you just don't have it in you most days. But keep focused on the good days and stay positive that more will come, and eventually they will. At least they have been for me recently. Doesn't mean they happen every day or even close to it. But you take each day as it comes. I've noticed that a lot of depressed people are really focused on their judgment of themselves as a person, and they usually have views of themselves that are, frankly, cartoonishly negative to an outside observer. I've been screened for depression but I think I have a vaguely positive self-image so this isn't where my mind goes personally. But just reading some of the things depressed people say about themselves is just so extreme. I think it's a result of depression cutting out all the positive thoughts and amplifying negative ones but even so it's surprising. Honestly this is why I have felt psychedelics can be a powerful tool in fighting depression. While I wouldn't advocate for trying to use psychedelics for depression outside of a clinical context, I noticed in my early college years that psychedelics could almost eliminate patterns of negative thinking that I had built up. They would help break those thought patterns down and rebuild a more realistic view of myself during the experience. The negative thought patterns would still be there afterwards, but I wouldn't find them being my default reaction to every situation. This is so true. Right before lockdown a year ago a friend invited me to share some psychedelic mushrooms with him, second time for me, the first time was kind of May. I went on one of those ego-dissolving trips where I got all my questions about existence answered. Now whenever I start to feel anxious I think about that experience and everything seems okay. I think the world would be a better place if everyone had that type of experience just once. I'm with you there. I have a running list of the people I love being vaccinated, and that's currently helping the most. Currently it's my older relatives and some school teachers, but I'm eagerly awaiting my turn. But yeah. That glimmer of hope is tough to keep alive sometimes. Sending love and support your way. I have a running list of people who weren't considerate enough to their co-workers by not wear masks. Refusing to wear masks, calling people sheep that they believe in COVID. There's three active cases at work. F all those people. I'm honestly not dealing with it very well but I'm in a decent place, I'm far from being in the worst scenario. I've basically been trying to better myself, a bit at a time. Through various means, picking up new hobbies, trying to learn a language, expanding my horizons, like finding new music, 
new games, watching more films I'd never normally watch etc., trying to become a more wholesome, positive person, patching up old wounds with people, listening to podcasts, trying to get out more, working hard at my job. Basically, there was a post on Reddit a few years ago about not having any zero days, those days where you accomplish nothing. Making sure every single day that I do something. Going out, checking up on someone, finishing something I've been putting off, tidying up, doing housework, going to work, exercising, making some nice food, whatever it is. Doing something I could look back on and go yeah, I did that today. Thanks for sharing, this comment definitely got me, I really haven't had that many zero days lately, even when the thing I did was clean my apartment or make a nice dinner, but even on the days when I objectively get a lot done, it all feels useless and meaningless. Like today I had class, finished a shift at work, edited and posted some videos. But I'm still sitting here on Reddit like I have every night for 10 months waiting for something to feel different or okay again I was doing a lot better a few months ago, trying to exercise more mostly and that that really helped. Still trying to find that spark again. But hey, we've got this. Time keeps moving whether we like it or not, and this is bound to end someday. I think there's literally tens of millions of people who feel the exact same as you right now. Remember, this is a universal thing. I think when this does end, I'm staying positive, I think it will, and people start to readjust back to some kind of normality, you'll appreciate the time you spent doing those things. So many people have either willingly spent it all watching trash TV or have been unable to really do anything for a multitude of reasons, at least you've been busy. It's okay to feel unfulfilled, we all do really since most things we do seems pointless, even if they're the basics of adult life but there's light at the end of the tunnel, even if it backlights a huge pile of crap. Just keep on going. Keep moving forwards, even if it's at a snail's pace. This is exactly how I feel. I rarely have zero days where I truly accomplish nothing. But, since the pandemic, my depression has been manifesting in a way where productivity feels pointless. For example I am someone who relentlessly cleans. My boyfriend and I bought our first home two years ago, and I spend every day tidying or landscaping or doing some home improvement project, basically, making our house a nice place to live. And sure, it fills the time. But, ultimately, I still have this hollow feeling that none of it actually matters. Same goes for my hobbies, plant care, interior design, reading, etc. Same goes for my job, and I am some who does supposedly fulfilling work. It's frustrating, because this is how I'm feeling despite having been in therapy for 5 years, despite being on anxiety slash depression meds, despite having a decent support system, and despite having two incredibly sweet pets to fill me with purpose. Don't get me wrong all of these things have all helped me immensely throughout the years. Therapy and meds saved my life, quite literally. But right now I'm finding it very difficult to find the purpose in doing anything. It's hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel. And I'm hanging on, but it's tough. As others have said, just want you to know that you're not alone in feeling this way. Edited to add, I know part of the issue for me is that all my previous good habits, exercising regularly, eating well, decent bedtime, etc., have gone down the drain since COVID. I'm definitely not someone who has the willpower to routinize without a schedule. So I know all of that for sure adds to the crappy COVID feels. Keeping a regular routine and moving your body does so much for mental health, I just wish I could actually manage to do it haha. I lay in bed all day and cry myself to sleep. So pretty badly. Trying to stay positive around my friends and when it gets really bad, I just tell them I'm struggling and need some time. And when I do actually talk about it, I get emotional way too fast and get really uncomfortable, because I don't want advice right now, I just need someone to listen. Yeah I feel that. People's advice is helpful sometimes, but just getting it out of your system is better. If you want, DM me your woes. Not like I have any good advice to give. Laughing my butt off. I don't want advice right now, I just need someone to listen. Holy crap does that hit home. I can't recall how it was phrased but I read a story here on Reddit that a parent responded to a child's needs with something along the lines of, do you need me to help, to listen, or, something else I can't recall. But basically it was giving them the option to just vent, or to seek advice, or whatever they needed. I know I always try to solve someone else's problems when they gripe about them and that's not always the best response. 
I'm trying to be better about responding like this parent did. I think the problem with the advice is that the person struggling may actually know what needs to be done. They just can't do it. Hence why they feel the way they do. It's a mental trap. Or a mental block. You might be able to show them the same door to the solution that they see as well. But they need to open it, not anyone else. That's how I feel anyway. Sometimes I just can't do that simple thing to make small steps to improve the situation. It sucks. I think it was do you want me to help you solve your problem slash give you a solution, or do you want support slash just a listening ear? For me at least, sometimes I actually want both. Like I do want advice, but on my own terms. I want the person to hold off on giving advice until I've talked myself out and I feel satisfied that they've paid close attention and really understood every aspect of my problem which might take a long time. I guess that's kind of demanding, and it's super rare for anyone to actually have that skill so I don't actually expect it, but it's very therapeutic. Talking about it is helpful. That's a great first step. Therapy works wonders, too. Friends are great but it's even more helpful when you have a professional that can listen and help you reframe situations slash work through things when that's needed. There are a lot of online therapy sites that are confidential and affordable. Highly recommend. On another note, try exercise. Doesn't have to be intense. A five minute walk is helpful to get started and clear your head. You can do it alone or socially distance with someone else. I started exercising more for the mental benefits and clarity, and it has benefited my physical body. It's okay to cry and feel your feelings. Take things one day at a time, and if that's too much, take it hour by hour or minute by minute. As others have mentioned feel free to DM me but I would also consider talking to a therapist. There are services that are all virtual slash over the phone that you only have to pay a monthly fee and you can use as much as you need. I'm sure there are multiple but I've used better help and it helped me through some tough times. There is no shame in getting help. I am getting therapy next month, I just happened to take a turn for the worse over the past week and it's really getting to my head. Also a reason why I don't really want to bother my friends or my boyfriend. Definitely no shame in getting help, it's quite admirable when people do try to get it. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to be the first to know about Red Rabbit Reader's new videos. If you like our videos, please like them on YouTube and share them with your friends. We welcome your comments below. Press to start another of our videos.